Good morning. Welcome everyone to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish for our celebration of the third Sunday of Easter. We especially welcome all of you who are with us online this morning and we invite you to post your prayer intentions to Facebook. And this morning is a very special day. You can't see online, but we have some very special guests this morning. I'm just going to check because their names are listed on the AMBO. You may be able to see that online. So we have Zachary, Kendall, and Christian and their families. You're very welcome. So nice to see you all here as the children celebrate their first communion. We need you to participate at Mass, as you know, to join in all the prayers. And so if you don't have your worship aid or a missal with you, I invite you now to download one from our website. Just go to www.cseaton.org and you'll see three lines in the top left corner, top left hand corner. If you click on those three lines on the top left hand corner, did you find the website? On those three lines you'll see resources click on the resources and you'll see the link to worship aids the first thing that comes up is today's worship aid once you've done that and also please uh, letting your friends on Facebook know where you're worshipping with us this morning let's put our phones on vibrate Our presider this morning is uh, Monsignor Jeff Burrell, and he's assisted, thank you, Father, and he's assisted by birthday boy and deacon Mr. Jack McCabe, whose son is also, it's his birthday today. And um, let's gather our prayers together and come to God's presence and Thank God for so many blessings. Let's pray for these children that this be a special day. Please stand with me now and take your worship aids so that together we can proclaim the entrance antiphon. Cry out with joy to God all the earth, O sing to the glory of his name, O render him glorious praise, Alleluia. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have some very special guests that are joining us here today. We have uh, Christian, uh, Zachary, and Kendall, and they are here today to receive their first Holy Communion. So we welcome them, and we welcome their parents, grandparents, godparents, and all, uh, the whole parish to this celebration. 
to prepare ourselves to celebrate the breaking of the bread that we will hear about in the gospel today, the Mass. Let us take a moment to call to mind our sins, always aware of God's love for each one of us. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your fathers did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Responsorial Psalm. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, Lord let, let your, your face, face shine, shine on us. Alleluia. When I call, answer me, O oh my God. When you relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your content shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not only for our sins, but for those of the whole world. The way we may sure that we know he is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Good morning. Good morning, Father. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, touch me and see. Perhaps some of you saw some of the funeral services yesterday for Prince Philip. He was 99 years old and was married to Queen Elizabeth for 73 years. Now, I don't claim to be an expert uh, with the royal family, but I, I must say listening to uh, some of the story of his life was quite inspiring. A much needed break from the news of the tense and polarized times in our own country. He was a veteran of the Second World War, and while his career path did not go in the direction that he had hoped for, he nonetheless accepted his place in life, and with great humor and dedication, he made the best of it. He, of course, was well known for his frank comments, and apparently he was never afraid to offer feedback about the clergy's homily. He sometimes would even disagree with them, and he did, was not a big fan of long homilies, long sermons. In fact, he said the perfect length for a sermon is eight minutes. So in honor of Prince Philip, I better hurry up. <laughs> My friends, our gospel begins today with the conclusion of the story of the road to Emmaus. We unfortunately do not get to hear the entire passage, but we do get to hear at least the ending and how the disciples recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And then from there they go to tell the other disciples about their amazing experience as they are recounting to the other disciples how Jesus revealed himself during the breaking of the bread, lo and behold, the Lord appears a second time. And the disciples are startled and terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus goes to great lengths to show them that he was not a ghost, he even shows them his healed wounds of his hands and his feet. It was indeed Jesus, the risen Jesus. And the marks of his crucifixion are a sign of his triumph and not his defeat. When you think about it, the belief in ghosts has been around for a very long time, even before the time of our Lord. And the fascination with ghosts continues even today. Just turn on the TV, you'll see various stations about the various TV shows about the paranormal. Every year, I don't know if Father Paul's ever told you this, but around Halloween, priests get calls <laughs> to go bless houses. And uh, I'm often a doubting Thomas with most of these cases, though I do believe in the spiritual life and all those kind of things, but normally I'm a doubting Thomas. And so, But on one occasion, some parishioners, a uh, beautiful family, large family, asked if I would come to bless their house. And uh, so I agreed. And so we, we prayed there, and I, I shared with them that, in general, you know, some things are unexplained, but uh, we Christ has conquered death and well, we believe in that. We believe in baptism and those kind of things. And so I'm going to, you know, use holy water and bless the house. And, and I was kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to do this. And, you know, okay. So uh, I said, would you like to come with me through the house as I bless it? And they said, no, 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 go, go right ahead, go right ahead. So I take the holy water sprinkler <laughs> that we see sometimes, and I'm, I'm going by myself through the house, and I'm, bless each room, and I go bless and bless, and I go into the next part of the next room, the next room. I go past the dining room, and out of the corner of my eye, I see this young girl in a flowing white dress going like this. <laughs> I 
almost threw the holy water sprinkler and went, ah! It was one of the little girls, the eight, wearing her Halloween costume. But it is interesting, isn't it, that people, for whatever reason, seem more likely to believe in ghosts than to believe in the power of the risen Jesus. People are more likely to be scared of ghosts than to know the joy, the peace, and the love of the risen Jesus in our lives. The challenge on this third Sunday of Easter is to know the risen Jesus, not just at Mass, not just at church and here, but our gospel today presents us with both worlds, if you will, here and out there. The disciples on the road to Emmaus finally recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, in the Eucharist, in the Mass, if you will. But moments later, in the next verses, as they are sharing the astonishing news with the other disciples about what had happened, he appears this time not at table, not during the breaking of the bread, but rather outside of all that. And guess what? They didn't recognize him. Do we recognize the risen Jesus out there? Risen in our lives and in the lives of others, risen from fear, risen in faith, countless witnesses who give witness to the Lord and have had the scars of failure, of mourning and loss, depression, addiction, divorce, and loneliness, but have said goodbye to the ghosts of yesterday and have embraced the victory with the risen Jesus here today. Their suffering and their wounds of their own crosses have led them to Christ's triumph and not their defeat. As we encounter the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread at this Mass, may we carry him with us to everyone we meet. May he touch our hearts, our minds, our very souls, not only to experience the risen Jesus here at Mass, but to see him risen out there today and this week. Let us make the best of it, seeing the risen Lord in our lives and seeing him in the lives of others. Amen. But they were startled. and They were terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. Together, let us stand and profess our risen faith, our faith in the risen Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, earth, of all things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, I believe, believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only the begotten Son of, Son of God, born of the Father before, before all ages, ages God, God, God from God, light from, from light, light, true God, God from true God, God begotten, God had not made. made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose, rose again, again on the third day in accordance, in accordance, with, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven and, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With Easter hope in our hearts, let us bring our prayers and needs before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For President Biden and the members of Congress, that God will guide their deliberations and help them find ways to act upon the critical issues confronting our nation, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For healing in cities and neighborhoods, especially in Minneapolis, that God will guide leaders in addressing issues of discrimination and injustice, turn hearts from violence and open pathways that lead to reconciliation. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God's healing love will resume the sick to health, make the vaccines effective, and curtail the spread of the virus. Let us pray. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Marilyn Edley, who we remember especially at this Mass. For all those who are seriously ill or hospitalized, including Michael Olive, Judy Moreau, Sister Maureen Rowe, Bunny Sheely, and those suffering from the coronavirus that God will ease their pain, help them to receive life-enhancing treatment, and restore them to their loved ones. And for all those who have recently died, including Deacon John Langmead, and Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And for those who mourn the loss of loved ones from COVID-19, May they find comfort and peace in God's love for them and their beloved deceased. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the needs of our sister parishes in Haiti and Baltimore, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray. Lord, hear, Lord, our, hear prayer. our prayer. Gracious Father, we place our hopes and fears, our needs and desires into your loving hands. Grant our prayers according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the the stranger, Jesus the Lord, be our companion, be our hope, bread for the journey. For our years, manner of ages. 
years of struggle and tears. Cup of salvation, fruit of the land, bless and receive now the work of our hands in the breaking of the bread we have known him we have been fed Jesus the strength Jesus the Lord, be our companion, be our hope. Pray, friends, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open for the faithful, for his death is our ransom for death, and his rising the life of all the risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come, you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word and my soul shall be healed. We turn again to our worship aid so that together we can proclaim the communion antiphon. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. Please be seated. When we receive communion here, we stand and place our hands flat in front of us. When deacon or monsignor has placed the host on our hands, we wait until they've gone to the next family group before we remove our mask and consume the host and then replace our mask covering nose and mouth. And even if you're not receiving communion, please stand if you can, 
because otherwise there's a tripping hazard there for the Eucharistic minister. Thank you. First, we'll be distributing communion to our first communicants. Kendall, the body of Christ. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Zachary, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christian, the body of Christ. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Break now the bread of Christ's sacrifice, giving thanks, hungry ones gather round. Eat all of you and be satisfied. In Christ's presence the loves will abound. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Seek not the food that will pass away. Set your hearts on the food that endures. Come, learn the truth and the living way, that the fullness of life may be yours. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Love as the one who in love for you gave himself for the life of the world. Come, 
to the one who is food for you, that your hunger and thirst be no more. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given, we eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Here are today's announcements. Next weekend, we're continuing to celebrate First Holy Communion at all Masses. If you would like to attend Mass in person, please sign up through the parish website or Facebook page so that we can make sure everyone has a seat. The link is available after 9.30 Mass each Sunday. We encourage you to consider coming to the 5.30 Mass where seating is typically available or the 11.30 outdoor Mass, weather permitting. Be beginning on Monday, April the 29th, any new parishioner or family registered during March will receive a phone call and an email from members in, of the welcoming committee. They will introduce themselves and be available for any questions. Poor box contributions this week will benefit Crofton Christian Caring Council. Thank you for your continued generosity toward the offertory. If you attend mass in person, Offertory gifts can be placed in the basket in the narthex. Otherwise, please continue to send in your envelopes or sign up for online giving through Give Central. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. Special welcome to our visitors who are with us for these first communicants. How about we have our first communicants come up and stand right on this bottom step? Come on up. Everybody got to see you. Stand right on this bottom step, right over here, right in front of the altar. Right in the center. Right in the center. And then face everybody. And let's offer them our congratulations. You guys have worked so hard with your parents during this year of pandemic so I, I want to thank the parents and you for the hard work that you put into this preparation and to this very special day so I am so proud of you guys so thank you for hanging in there and it's so good to see all of you here today especially those who are watching us online you can go right back to your seat okay? <laughs> So friends, we are going to have uh, another outdoor Mass right after this Mass at 11.30. Uh, so we have another glorious day. So um, I just want to let you all know that uh, if you would, take your pictures uh, as soon as you can. And because we need to clear the parking lot on this side of the church, my right and will be your left, so that we can put cones out and then start setting up. So uh, thank you again for your attention. Thank you, Monsignor. I'll, I'll leave the microphone to you. <laughs> I always get nervous when he comes out. I think he's going to fire me or something. <laughs> Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in the flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Please be seated. The ushers direct our safe exit from the church via the center doors at the back. And we make our way to the central doors via the center aisle. You can see we've marked the way there by the blue social distancing lines. Try not to bunch up or mix with any other groups you don't know and make your ways uh, to the car. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Go make of all disciples, we hear the call, O Lord, that comes from you, our Father, in your eternal word. Inspire our ways of learning through earnest fervent prayer. And let our daily living reveal you everywhere. Go make of all disciples, baptizing in the name of Father, Son, and Spirit, from age to age the same. We call each new disciple to follow you, O Lord, redeeming soul and body by water and the word. Go make of all disciples we at your feet would stay and Till each life's vocation shows forth your holy way. We cultivate our nature, God plants in every heart, revealing in our witness the master teacher's art. Go make of all disciples, we welcome your command. Lo, I am with you always, we take your guiding hand. The task looms large before us, we follow without fear. And heaven and earth, your power shall bring your kingdom here.